All right, Kung Fu class, let's get started. Feet together, right hand makes a fist, left hand is open, and we bow. Okay, then our Kung Fu salute, the left hand is at the heart. It's about a thumb away from your heart, and your right hand is at your hip. We started this last week, we're going to move on with it this week. So the basic part of that is the hand salute like this. And then they're going to sweep down to your hips, up behind your ears, and back. <clears throat> Let's try that again. So this is called the disciples position. Your left hand is at the heart. Right hand is at the hip. You salute. Then they sweep down, up, and back. OK, one more time, because it's good for you. You Qigong people will know this is actually circling the microcosmic orbit. So uh, that's kind of nice. Bonus. Ready. So salute, down, up, and back. OK, now your feet are going to do something while that happens. So let's focus on your feet. Your right feet is going to step into a cross stance. So it comes forward, and then my toe turns out. And you can see why it's called a cross stance, because I'm like cross-legged here if you look at it from the side. So from straight ahead, you go crossed stance. Then you know, my left foot is going to step out into a cat stance. So that's like a little kitty cat testing the ground, meow, just with the toe. So again, I'll do it facing toward you. My right foot turns out and bend the knee, crossed stance. Then my left foot steps through, touches the toe, cat stance. Okay, from a new direction. So this will warm up your stance work too, even though it's just the salute. So right foot cross, that back heel comes up. I don't know if you can see that yet. Then steps through cat. Then all that's going to happen is you're going to step back left, right. Okay, so very simple. Then we're going to put it together with our hands. So it goes cross step, cat step, left back, right back. Again, cross step, cat step, left back, right back. Putting it together with what we did with the hands, it's disciples position. Then you go cross step, cat step, Left back, right back. Let's do it a couple times. Just salute the lineage, salute your ancestors. Anybody you want to salute, now's your time. Right cross, left cat, left back, right back. Disciple position, right, left, left, right. Okay, so that's what we do at the beginning of the class. Go back and watch this video if you don't have it yet, because uh, eventually, I should be teaching you a form every time. You just salute, and there you go. All right, feet shoulder width apart, chi awakening. Here we go, just three of them ready. Inhale, reach up, connecting with the sky, and exhale, bring it down into your lower belly. So this is like the spacious, dynamic energy of the sky. Inhale. And you bring that into your center of power down in the center of gravity. One more time. And down. Now, feel your feet turn into tree roots, grow into the earth. And you inhale, you pull up the stabilizing and nourishing energy of the earth. And again, concentrate that in your lower belly. Two. And three. Good. Third exercise, your hands are going to come up to the level of your heart, but you want to be bringing the chi to that lower belly. So you inhale, heaven and earth, come into the belly center, expand, and then like they're forming a, a sphere of light around you, signifying your good boundaries. So inhale, heaven and earth, come in, fill the lower tummy, expand from there, exhale like you're surrounded in a Egg of light and orb of light. One more time, inhale. And exhale. And release down. Okay, very quick lubricating the joints. Let's circle those wrists. 
A lot of you were here for the Qigong, but might as well get a little extra warm up, switch directions. Now elbows. One day if we do a class in person, switch directions. All these circles are actually self-defense techniques. These are all ways that you can get out of people grabbing your wrists and doing other things they were really shouldn't have done. That was really kind of stupid of them. Okay, roll your shoulders back. Oh, I needed this one. Good, roll your shoulders forward. Okay, step out into a wider stance. Put one hand behind the back and let's take a big shoulder and follow the hand with your eyes. Two. And three. And then go the other way. Inhale, exhale. And three. Other side, here we go. One. Two, three, switcheroo, one, two, and three. Okay, step it in shoulder width, hands on your hips. Let's go ear to shoulder, exhale chin to chest, inhale other ear to shoulder, look up, and then exhale reverse direction, ear to shoulder, chin to chest, Inhale, ear to shoulder, look up, switch. And come down, chin to chest. And up. All right, put your hands in Tyrannosaurus posture, just because it gets them out of the way. And you're going to twist side to side. Very good. Hands on your waist, circle your upper body. And uncircle your upper body. Good, now take your hips in a circle. And switch. Feet together, take your knees in a circle. And switch. Good, come up, take your right foot back, circle the ankle. And switch. And other side, circle the ankle. And switch. Good, shake it out. And pull it down, inhale. Exhale with a sigh. <sighs> and relax. Okay, that's right. That's what time it is. Cool. Uh, just trying to get my math brain to compute time while doing complex physical movements. So let's uh, work with our temple exercises we began learning last week. We're going to do a quick version of this because we have some other uh, warm ups to do today. So the first one is split bamboo. You take your fingers and you pierce. Spread out, like you're pushing apart two little bamboo trees, and then they snap back together and down. Here you go. Pierce, out, snap, and down. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Speak shoulder width apart chopping the wooden post behind you. So your hands are up, you're gonna turn left, chop, and then immediately turn right and chop. Ready, one, left, right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then for balance, we'll go the other way. So you're gonna turn and go right, left, 
Make sure you turn and look as if you were looking at a target. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, step out wide. Now we're gonna slap down. So hands up, you're gonna sink down into your stance. Exhale, slap back. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, step back in shoulder width. We're gonna do knee raise, so hand over hand, and you're gonna bring your knee up and touch your hands. Don't bring your hands down and touch your knee if you can. So if your hands are down here, that's fine. But we wanna get the knee coming up and point your toe down as you come up. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, now the crane leg raise, slightly different, you bring that knee up and then tilt your foot just so it's covering the knee. Don't hacky sack. It's just tilt the foot so it's covering the knee. And then the opposite hand, it's gonna strike the inside ankle. So here we go, let's go one foot, then the other, one foot, and the other. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then we do kick your own asana, which is kick your own asana. So as you come up, you're gonna hit the outside of the foot, helping to stimulate those meridians. So here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. Then a uh, simplified version for today, we're gonna do straight leg raise. So right foot back, hands out. And with a straight leg, you're just gonna swing it straight up. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five. Switch, and one, two, three, four, all right, switch, let your hands down in the middle. Get okay, loose, have fun. We're gonna do our outside crescent kick. So the same posture with your hands. The back foot, let's do a baby version. You can actually relax the hands for a minute. It's just gonna swing out and make a crescent arc around to the outside. So do a couple of babies just to get the shape. Whee! You can even make that mantra if you want. Whee! Come on now, Whee! I can't hear you, Whee! oh, cause you're on mute. Okay, and this isn't a rock concert. All right, and then if you've got that, then you'll swing it up to about head height ideally, but even if it comes across the middle, you can take this hand down and hit your hand. Don't try to hit the foot with the hand. You can bring it in a little bit, but I made that mistake. It hurts both your foot and your hand cause that foot's traveling at a good velocity. So here we go, outside crescent kick. One, two, three, four, and five. Switch feet. Ready, outside crescent kick with the left. One, two, three, four, and five. Oh, we didn't do any baby ones on that side. Okay, let's do them. Whee! Whee! Come on, it's fun. Whee! All right, switch feet. One more. Now we're gonna do the inside crescent kick. So the outside crescent kick, that's right, it went out. Inside crescent kick is gonna go in. So let's do some baby ones. Here you go. Whee! Whee! And don't discount these baby ones. These are actually used in wrestling. These are, they'll trip the legs out of the guy and stuff like that. So these are all basic body skills that we want. Whee! Okay, when you're ready, again, if it's low, bring the hand down a little bit. 
See if you can hit your own hand or ideally get up to head height, but don't fall over or anything. Come on now. Here we go. Whoosh. Two. Whoosh. Three. Whoosh. Four. Whoosh. And five. Whoosh. Switch feet. Hands down. Whee. Let's get the basic motion. Whee. Whee. It's a great way to warm up. We can maybe ask uh, Jake about it if he's still on, but doing a simpler, easier version of the movement you're gonna do in your sport. Great way to warm up the muscles and the nervous system. All right, now let's do the actual sport specific warm up and inside crescent kick. One, two, three, four, and five. Good, let's pull down, inhale, and exhale. All right, so very simple. These are temple exercises is the name of this uh, series of movements. According to the legend, this is when uh, Bodhidharma, who is legendarily the founder of Chan Buddhism came to the Shaolin Monastery, saw all the monks were kind of sickly. According to our tradition, this is what he taught them first. And you're hitting these acupoints, you're moving blood and lymph, um, and it'll actually benefit, they say, it benefits not only your physical body, but your subtle body, which influences your meditation practice. So let's move into a couple of specifics while we're in our warm up realm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one foot in front, one foot behind. So this is not a traditional Kung Fu stance. This is more, we're gonna kind of do like they do in a um, light kickboxing warm up, which is just being able to rock back and forth on your feet. Now, if you're doing, uh, if you're already warmed up, you know, you might be on your, you might be doing various kind of boxing footwork. You might be doing some ollie shuffles, whatever. For now, we're just gonna rock back and forth. And the idea is that you're not static. So get this rocking back and forth. If you're into, this is a Chinese martial art. So if you're into the Qigong stuff, this is also just gonna be pressing those kidney points on the bottoms of your feet over and over again to help mobilize the energy in your body. So it's also gonna work your soleus muscle, which is considered the second heart because it helps to pump the lymph through your system. So we need that soleus. Anyway, you can just rock, have fun a little bit, bounce a little bit. You can, you can bounce in your knees, you can bounce on your toes, and you got your forward back, forward back. Okay, so in our form last week, we had practiced, and we'll review this and get the next move. We practiced this big overhead block and then punch. Now, if you're thinking about this, about fisticuffs, this big overhand block from way over here is totally stupid. Like, how impractical. Somebody's trying to kick you in the ribs and you're like, wait, I've got something to block it with. It's just way over. No, you just get your elbow in the way. You get yourself out of the way. But what this is training is it's doing a big movement with your body to get what beginners often don't get, which is using your abdominal muscles to make these punches and these blocks happen. So we're gonna play with this more in kind of the practical self-defense frame, and then we'll go back into the traditional forms, which are more like a yoga. So with your hands up near your face, they can be open, they can be in a fist, whatever you like, and we're, we're rocking. Then what's gonna happen is this hand is gonna do a pari, and so it's just going to slap like a little kitty cat. In fact, get your kitty cat, uh, slappers on because it's a year of the tiger but it's just started so it's a little kitty tiger okay meow 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 okay so your backhand is going to slap but what's happening is my belly muscles are making that happen i'm not standing here and swatting the flies <sighs> meow if you think of the tiger actually you'll get this because <sighs> it meow, right so this is if an object were coming at your face <sighs> You would hit it with it. You wouldn't go very far away, but it's your whole body that's batting that object away. So try it with the other hand. You can hiss or meow as you like, and then play with your footwork a little bit, keeping those hands up, elbows in, and then just meow, meow, meow. Okay, similarly, then these parties can also scoop uh, kicks that are coming toward your tummy. And in that case, it will come all the way down and scoop to the side. Come all the way down and scoop to the side. This one feels more like a turtle to me, but whatever, it's the water tiger 
Chinese New Year. So maybe the, it's kind of a turtley tiger. So, but the same thing, my tummy, muscles here are moving to get that moving. Muscles here are moving to get that moving. Moving, moving. So you can just kind of play. Oh, something was coming towards you, you moved it out of the way. God forbid you should have to use this on self-defense, but what you'll find, what I found is that often it's random inanimate objects that are fall out of the cupboard that you're gonna use your Kung Fu moves on. So you can play with that. And you just want this sense that your body is moving, not just your hands, right? This, that's, looks cool. All right, so. Particularly the backhand because of the way our form is going, you'll feel, but this also works with that front hand. Okay, the second thing you're gonna do is your lead jab. So from here, your hands are up by your face and this is gonna come out and the shoulder actually turns over a little bit. Why? Well, because this protects you in case they were to counter punch you. It's actually putting your shoulder against your head. So the hand comes out and it turns over at the last minute and you can see I've cut off part of their targets. The, the big off button, which is my jaw, gets cut off when you punch like that. Don't have to focus on that too much, but what I want you to know is just like in our form, where we had this sense, I said, pull the ripcord, pull, and that makes that hand come out. The same thing wants to happen here is that I want to turn my body, and almost like my body is flinging my hand out. There's not a lot of muscles here. So this hand is here, and it just, my body turns, and it flings it straight out. Here, flings it straight out. Flings it straight out. Flings it straight out. Flings it straight out. So get your rock. Again, this is our this is this basic little warm up, so you don't have to be too fancy. And then at some point, while you're just playing on your own, you can kind of put on a good Prince song or whatever, and then get yourself in the habit of turning that body to get that punch to come out. Turn that. Turn that body. So it's kind of random. Hush. And you're trying, hush, getting the belly hush, to power that punch. Hush. Then putting them together, you can kitty cat, meow. And what you'll notice is when I've done kitty cat, it puts this hand a little more toward the back so that as I turn out, the punch is coming out with more of my body. So meow, punch, meow, punch, meow, punch, and meow, punch. Let's switch sides. Here you go, put your right foot forward now or whatever foot you weren't using. Get your walk back and forth. This is for your soleus muscle, for your kidney channel. You can bounce a little if you want to. Get those hands up. Slightly different than boxing because this is uh, Chinese martial arts. You wouldn't ever drop your hands but they don't have to be glued here, like in day one of your boxing lessons, they can be a little bit dynamic. So you'll notice as I move, my hands will follow what the, what the connective tissue is doing to help get my body moving. And that's fine in these Chinese martial arts, because when you know how to strike from these various angles, then you just do from wherever your hand has ended up. Okay, so from here, Let's slow it down for a second and work belly, meow, belly, meow, belly, meow, belly, meow, belly, meow, and meow. Then what about if something was coming toward my stomach? I use the hand here, my tummy turns it. Meow, 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 and meow. Usually you'll back up at the same time, but you wanna be able to use that abdominal power, not just your silly little hands, right? We want a whole body movement. Okay, then working on that jab, the fist comes out, but it's thrown by my belly turning. My body turns, psh, the fist comes out. Not too far, right? Don't throw yourself away. You still need to be facing your target, but the body's gonna turn it. Keep this other hand here. Don't pull it back like a bow and arrow. Throw it out, throw it out, 
throw it out, throw it out, throw it out, and throw it out. Then you can move a little bit, get used to putting that jab out from movement and having your whole body engage to do it. You can practice the kitty swat, meow, and then jab, meow, and then jab. Meow the belly, and then jab. Okay, so you're just getting your cardio, you're getting your calf muscles nice and sexy. And you're practicing some full body movement, getting the habit of letting the movement come from the center of power. Okay, finish, pull down, inhale. Good, let's do one more before we get into our form for the day. And this is gonna be your rear leg thrust kick. This is also in your form. So if you put one leg forth and one leg back, and for now, we're gonna have this kind of shoulder width chamber, right? You can see daylight between my two feet. Some schools will have your stance really narrow like this, or you know, like Bruce Lee's kind of kind of this way because he loved to throw a sidekick off that front leg. Um, for now, we're doing this not because it's right, but because it's going to make it easiest for you to get this kick correctly. So your right foot is back, shoulder width definitely not crossed up. Nobody says do that. Then your front foot, you're going to turn the toes out a couple degrees. So like if my toes were at my toes are at like 12, 10 o'clock. I'm gonna turn them back to 11 so that this knee can come through, pick up my toes and push with the sole of my foot. So you notice how this kind of throws me back. It's because my hips are trying to throw themselves through. I'm not just coming here. There is some stuff in internal martial arts that does that. But in this case, I wanna push way through. To help you with this, we're gonna do a method with our hands that I don't want you to repeat later, but feel as if you can grab on. So I turn that toes out, grab onto something, and then pull through. Hands up, turn my hand, turn my foot, grab on. Okay, so I'm gonna aim with my knee, put the foot up, and I thrust with my hips. So knee, foot, hip. Here we go, let's try a couple at a moderate, Pace. Ready? One, whoosh, two, whoosh, three, whoosh, four, whoosh, and five, whoosh. Try the other side. Here we go. So toes turn slightly out. Now I'm going from 12 to one. Knee comes up, foot, and then hip thrust. Toe, knee, hip thrust. You have a punching bag at home. Maybe next week I'll film this from the dojo, um, but your knee is gonna aim at what your target is. So if you have a punching bag, you aim at the punching bag with your knee, and then the foot just follows. So try your grabbers. It gives you the real sense of being able to push through. Here we go. Go. Okay, and then at a moderate pace, Ready, one, whoosh, two, whoosh, three, whoosh, four, whoosh, and five, whoosh. Good. All right, so in weeks to come, we'll start combining these. Pari, jab, thrust, kick, and mix with some of the techniques that we'll be learning in the next sections of the form. So. We have 11 more minutes of class. Let's take one of them to take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll work on our set. So let's get into our form that we started last week and we are going to uh, finish that first set this time. So I will mirror you <clears throat> and let's get started. Uh, if this is confusing to you, go back. The video from last week is on the YouTube. So watch that, but we're gonna go as if you already know it. So your opening position, your right hand is out. Your left hand is at the shoulder. You look where you're going. You step left, you block down, you pull back and punch. Then I'm gonna turn my stance into a forward stance. 
As I block up, punch with the back hand. Coil that hand outward like you were blocking. It's not really usually a block, but as if it was blocking outward. Pull it back and kick that same kick we just practiced. Then to switch to the other side, all you do is block down with that left, turn into your horse stance and punch. And then we're doing it on the other side. So now turn your right foot out, forward stance, punch with the back hand. Coil open, pull, kick. Block down with the right, punch out. And then the only move that's gonna be new is how to close. You're gonna take that right hand, slap, and you're looking at this guy, step up, put the left hand out. But at the very last minute, you turn and look in the new direction. Okay, so that's your whole first road of Tan Tui. Let me do it facing away from you. So now I'll be using the same hands as you, not a mirror image. And let's give it a try. So right hand extended, look to the left, step left, block down, pull back, punch. Turn into your forward stance, block up, punch. Coil that right hand outward, pull back, kick. Block down with the left, turn into the horse stance, punch. Forward stance, block up, punch with your left. Left hand blocks outward, pulls back, kick. Come down, block, punch. Then slap, my right hand reaches across, slap. I step up and punch, then look the other way at the very last minute, because that's the way I'm about to go. Okay, let me do it moving away from you here so we get all these different camera angles. So your right hand is extended. Step left, block down, punch left. Turn, block up, punch right. Right hand coils out, pull back and kick. Step down, block down, punch right. Shift back if you need to in the space. Then forward stance, block up, left hand punch. Coil out, pull back, kick. Land, block down, punch. Then right hand slaps, step up, punch. Look the new direction. Okay, let's pause and I'll just see if there's any questions. Let's go, um, I'll go the same way as you. So right hand out, look to the left, horse stance, block, pull, punch. Lift, turning your stance and punch. Block out, pull, kick. Land, so I'm not landing quite in a horse stance, but I block and I turn into my horse stance. Block up, stance, punch. Block, pull, kick. Down, punch. Slap, punch, and look. All right, so you'll have this on video in case it's not clear. We will also take live questions after we finish, but let's cl close formally. Palms up, ready, inhale, dip into the earth, into the sky, bring it down with a sigh, clear, oh, particularly any aggression that's still like in there that you won't need when you go and talk to a client or whatever. Then again, inhale and replenish. You made so much space, let's fill it with light. And last time, inhale, reestablishing the energetic bubble. So visualizing like a sphere of light that surrounds your body. Feet together and salute. Disciples position. And if you've got it, we'll do our formal salute. 